kept. And so during that time in college, I had a moment in time, a definitive moment where I failed a class and I was sitting in the classroom and the professor says, do if I call, did I call out your name? If I didn't call out your name, come in after the fact. And I came in after the fact and he goes, well, um, I dropped you from all your courses. What? What do you mean you dropped me from all my courses? And so he dropped me from all my courses because I had failed a prereq to all of my major courses. I was a junior in college at the time. I was devastated. But what I found is that there is a silver lining and sometimes what we call failure. I ended up taking a class that's called it was African-American studies at the time. And I ended up meeting my future wife in that class. Randy Atkins Jr., a law, a low country native of South Carolina, creatively weaves his experiences as a corporate consultant, ordained minister, community leader, and distinguished Toastmaster into a tapestry inspiring observers to integrate spiritual growth principles into everyday life. Randy has a passion to create lasting change in lives through writing, teaching, and speaking. He is an altruistic leader, organizational visionary, captivating speaker, and respected advisor with a mission is to inspire individuals to be leaders, change agents, change agents and go-getters. Welcome, Randy. Hey, Kathleen. Thanks for having me on. You're welcome. So, Randy, (laughs) why don't you tell everybody a little bit about your journey of becoming an awakening spirit? My journey started when I was probably around eight years old with my friend, my best friend. Uh, We would start out with creating these contraptions in our backyard and his backyard, actually, not so much mine. And uh, we would get tarp, we would get tape, we would get um, all of these different things that uh, we would build out. And when we would build out, we would be building out worlds such as Star Trek or Star Wars or whatever it might be at the moment in time. And one thing as I was eight years old and figuring things out is I started to notice that Uh, whether it was both of us coming up with an idea in our mind and then uh, putting it together, or if it was him putting it, him coming up with an idea and he telling me what to do, or if it was me telling him, hey, I've got the idea, you do what you need to do, uh, which I really like the best, actually, that um, (laughs) and I found out that I like to do that even now as as I'm older, that the, the idea was that something in my mind that, that is an imagination, something that um, I come up with an idea can become reality in this world. And so throughout my journey, uh, I was wondering and having uh, intriguing thoughts, whether it was in school or as I was uh, starting to you know, find out spiritually who I am, uh, what does it mean to live in this world? And how does that connect with uh, ideas and thoughts in my spirituality, how does that connect into this this specific world that we have? And so my journey began there prim- primarily. And then uh, later on, I, I found Christianity and as a part of my life of saying, hey, you know, how is it that um, you can live life and continue to move forward and see in this beautiful world, uh, maybe what we should be seeing or it be in a place where we have uh, direct intention. And as I went to college, I, I found out there are many stories there where uh, initially I thought I failed. I thought I had um, you know, misstepped. And so during that time in college, I had a moment in time, a definitive moment where I failed a class and I was sitting in the classroom and the professor says, do if I call, did I call out your name? If I didn't call out your name, come in after the fact. And I came in after the fact and he goes, well, um, I dropped you from all your courses. What? What do you mean you dropped me from all my courses? And so he dropped me from all my courses because I had failed a prereq to all of my major courses. I was a junior in college at the time. I was devastated. But what I found is that there is a silver lining and sometimes what we call failure. I ended up taking a class that's called it was African-American studies at the time. 
And I ended up meeting my future wife in that class. Yeah. And we've been married for 26 years. But it was because of that, what I would call a failure. I remember I was just so distraught because I was like, I'm going to have to be in school another semester. <laughs> this is horrible. I cannot believe this. But out of that, I've been married for 26 years. We have three beautiful children. So I learned there that um, sometimes things that are packaged as failure may not actually be failure. And so um, there are some other areas, definitive moments. One other definitive moment I'll share at this moment, just as uh, as I've been learning on my journey, was uh, my my brother, who was 19 years old, was in a fatal car accident, and it, it shifted and changed my life because I I didn't know what to do at the moment and un couldn't understand what, what was happening. And um, as that went on, I was struggling. Just I just wanted him to just walk back through the door or whatever. But it was like almost as if I could not believe this occurred. Well, six months later, we were in a fam family gathering and my mother, she said, hey, I have a letter that I was on the computer upstairs for some reason. And I see a letter from your brother that he must have written before he passed. And it's about you. And he had written that letter and had talked about me and the impacts that I had. When I was talking to him all those years, I didn't think I was making any impact at all. I didn't know that our conversations were impacting him in a way. And he was saying how proud he was of me. And that shifted me and changed me from just saying, oh my gosh, I don't know why this happened to what to more of no matter what happens in this world, I'm going to share the messages that I have to anyone that can help them, that help them along the way. Even if it doesn't look like it from an external perspective, I'm going to share that with as many people as I can. And I find that particular portion was one of the most defining moments for me from a spiritual perspective where I connected more with my source, my creator, and understanding, hey, this is what I want uh, to do and be able to live this life more from the inside out than from the outside in. So uh, that's a little bit of of my journey to becoming uh, more awakened and understanding who I am and what I'm supposed to be doing. That's a powerful story because I had a sister who was 21 years old who traveled Europe and she passed away. And six months before she passed away, I had a dream that I saw her coming home and what we buried her in was what I saw her in. Wow. Yeah. That's... So yeah, that was pretty intense because, you know, she's all over Europe. She's like this vivacious young woman. Um, she, she just wanted, and it, I think when people know they're going to die young, they live as much as they can in a very short period of time. And my sister Kelly actually did that. I mean, she made my mother crazy because she was just the wild child. And I think somewhere she knew and we got a hold of all of her journals and read her journals. And I guess my father had come, came in. I was on my way moving out from Florida and I wasn't told that she had passed yet. And because my mother said, you've just got to get her into Colorado because she doesn't need to know this. And so when mm -hmm. I went to my mother's work instead of her apartment or condo, I um, said, you know, I'm here for my mom. And he says, your mom's not here. I said, what are you talking about? He says, she's in Germany. So my mother's not in Germany. Um, yeah, my mother was in Germany. I said, why? And he said, well, your sister died. And that was how I learned about my sister's death. Oh and I, it was like this unbelievable shock went through my body because I'm 24 years old. Okay. Mm -hmm. Kelly's 21. I'm in this unbelievable shock. I've driven through snowstorms and everything else from South Florida because this is in December that right. I'm coming up. So my mother, of course, is really worried about it. And, you know, so my, when I got there, my father was already there, I think. And he left because Kelly basically said, I don't want my father was the devil himself, you know, kind of thing. And mm -hmm. if I would have seen my father when I walked in my mom's house, I would have turned around and walked away and they would have never seen me again. That was what I would have done. But just mm -hmm. the shock of hearing about a family member dying and you're 24 and she's 21. And it's like, it doesn't compute in your brain. Yes. At all. It's very difficult. You know, and it's like, it's, how? Yeah. 
I mean, especially when somebody's got like this life about them, you know, they're bigger than life themselves. And it's like, they're struck down at 21 and you're just, this doesn't compute. So it, it really helped me. I mean, I knew what she was up to and all that kind of stuff. And she actually came to me one day in the car when I was driving home from work and I can see her on the side of the corner of my eye sitting there. And she's like, where's, you know, like, where, where's my body? It was almost like, that's what she was asking me. And I just said, Kelly, I don't know you're dead. And I just looked over and said, you're dead. She's like, oh, okay. And she just left. She just left. I mean, that was so my sister, but yeah. you know, it was because when you die that suddenly, as you probably know, people come back because they're like, woke up from this sleep and they're like, well, where's my body? And you know, why is everything so different? And once I told her she was dead, she was off. She had a good time. <laughs> I mean, she oh created my. havoc for my sister. I mean, she just had so much fun picking on everybody for a little while just to let us know that she was still around, which was, you know, really nice because it was really hard for all of us when she passed and to deal yeah. with that and then seeing her in the casket and was like, oh my God, that's what I saw her in. I mean, it was just, wow. You just had and to it, deal with it. And that can be really tough to to deal with and to, um, you know, coming uh, confrontation with is like, how do uh, you continue to move forward in life? And, you know, one some of the things you, you pick up over time is say, you know what, um, you know, the, my brother lives on through me. There are things that, you know, we had conversations about or um, maybe personality things that he had or would that we can uh, allow them to live on through us. And uh, we can do things in this world to at least have uh, whatever their their portion of their impact to this world was to be able to share that and be able to um, have it be able to live on through um, each and every one of us that they touched or impacted. Uh, but yep. you have to process it because it's it's yep. yeah, one of those things is like, especially when it's a shock, when it's a shock, yep. it's like, whoa, wh I, I didn't have time to, um, you know, come to grips with what was going on and how uh, this occurred. And so, um, yeah, this was uh, that was a defining moment of of my life yep. and, and all my journey, because you're like, you know, you're questioning life itself and um, understanding, you know, what is the reason for each of us and why are we here? What are we here to do? Mm -hmm. Well, we're going to go ahead and take a, take a quick commercial break. Ready to discover the deeper purpose of your life? Kathleen Flanagan's Soul Journey course guides you through profound spiritual awakening, helping you connect with your higher self and unlock the wisdom within. Embark on a journey of transformation and self-discovery. Visit KathleenMFlanagan.com and start your soul journey today. Welcome back, everyone, to the Journey of an Awakening Spirit. This is Kathleen Flanagan, your host, and we're streaming on the Bold Brave TV network. And we have Randy Atkins in the room with us today. So, Randy, after all those defining moments that you experienced, what were the tools that you used to get to where you are today? Yeah, there are multiple tools to employ one of them was to number one start to connect with uh, the source my creator uh, i call him god and he uh, from a perspective of understanding what my purpose was here and trying to seek that out and the way to see that i did that seeking that out was i would i started these disciplines of waking up early in the morning meditation trying to listen um you know initially it was a very small step of um, you know, trying to just get five minutes in and then um, moving towards uh, more time where there's prayer and meditation and then journaling. So um, the combination of um, prayer and meditation began to make me more aware of you know, who am I? Who, why am I here? Um, what are some of the things that um, help me in, in my lifetime? And some of the things that I ended up gaining from that is um, number one, my general purpose was uh, helping to please my creator, who is God, is love. And so then love uh, would be something that I should be expressing on a daily basis, uh, maybe to whomever I meet, whomever I impact, whomever I come in contact with, that love would be a part of that. And then there is this specific purpose that 
is my gifting, is what makes me unique and what makes me uh, who I am, that I would be able to share that on a consistent basis every day. And the idea is, is that you become way more creative when you are uh, walking in uh, what you were born to do and like each of us has has these unique giftings uh, and i found that having that unique gifting and really um being aware of that and being intentional about it because you know there are some things you'd be like oh well that's just you know anybody can do that but i come to find out the more i did more meditation and more prayer and be like no this is something that you do easily but everybody doesn't so yeah. that's your gifting and i'm like oh okay so what i'll do <laughs> on a more consistent basis is to you know teach for example that's i know that's one of my giftings and so i would teach and take something maybe complex maybe something that is not as easy to share and and make it you know something that is digestible for anyone anyone that can um, take it and understand whether I tell a story, provide a metaphor or whatever it is. And um, learning that allowed me to be more creative. So then I can do and be able to share in this world the creativity that was put within me and be able to share that on a daily basis. I became more fulfilled by doing that on a daily basis. And as I do that, and I consistently do that now, because you, the more you do and the more you are being creative, um, the more impact that you're having with everyone that is around you. And, and guess what? It rises the level of what you're thinking about on a consistent basis. So I'm no longer thinking on levels of negativity or what's outside of me or what's going on around me, but I begin to really resonate on a level that allows for me to um, talk about things that are at a higher level that keeps me happy, what's joyful, what's um, exciting about this world and, and looking at the possibilities. And so if I see something external to me, I know it's something that's from the past. It is not something that I um, have right now that I can sit here and I say, all right, what I'm going to do at this moment, I'm going to be aware of who I am. I know what I'm about to do. I'm going to have an intent for what's coming next. And if I have that intent, I know that at some point in time that that will become a reality in this world. And this goes all the way back to where I was eight. And I'm like, ah, that imagination, that idea, how can that become real? And the more I use my creativity, the more fulfilling I become, the greater I am always vibrating on a higher level. And anyone that I talk to, if I'm walking in the room, they have to recognize that I'm at a different particular vibration level in what I'm doing than maybe where they might be if there's an issue. Sometimes there's a problem and you can become more discerning by doing just those practices. The last practice I didn't really share is the journaling. The journaling, it's it gives you great insight. Uh, and so my journaling it had allowed for me to be able to continue to see where uh, there are happenings, there are things that are going on, there are synchronicities that are going on on a daily basis that we can see, we can uh, participate in. And if you begin to walk with intent, write those things down and say, all right, this is the intent. This is what I'm looking for in my life. And this is how I'm going to live. And the interactions that you have, you will find that, wow, you know what? it actually begins to be materialized in this world. And so those are some of the tips and tools that I began to employ in my life. And um, doing that on a consistent basis as a practice and as a discipline uh, began to change everything. I agree with that. When I was in my 20s, I started meditating because, you know, there was just so much head trash and I just had so much shame and belittlement and anger. And I just didn't know who I was. I, I really was a very lost soul. And so I started meditating and I would spend hours. I mean, I, I, I mean, sometimes I've slept up, get back up, you know, and it was just as quiet the mind. That was the main thing. And I would spend, it would be like Sunday afternoon. I would do like four hours of meditation because I just needed to learn to stop this because it never shut up, you know, yeah. <laughs> I and, needed and, peace of mind. God, did I need peace of mind. And, <laughs> and you don't have to entertain it. You you can have it do whatever it wants. It can continue to do that. But after a while, it will just be like, okay, well, you know, I'm just watching traffic go by in my head. Hey, oh well. <laughs> <laughs> and 
that's what it, and that's pretty much what I came to the realization that it finally quieted the mind enough to where I could see who I was and be a bigger version of myself. Now, did I own that at the time at 21 years old? And they're telling me, well, this is who you are. And you're like, oh, in your dreams, I'm that person, you know, but it was true. But it was just, it was, I had to take my time to embrace that because we're sometimes we're so much bigger than we think we are that that's almost more frightening than staying small. Wow, and I wanted to big thing there. <laughs> And I, and I'm sitting here going, okay, how do I embrace this? Cause I'm terrified of that person because you know, when you've been belittled up until that point, you're like this little kid, maybe I'll come out and see what's going on in the world. You know, like the little mouse, well, who's going to try to get me and eat me. So, and I'm going to talk about this just because I put the Mount Everest over me to protect me when I was a little kid from all the trauma that I had suffered. And I just took that off. And I know we had a conversation that I talked about moving the mountain. Well, I decided it was Mount Everest because when I moved the mountain, I saw a clear path. And now I've been in this very vulnerable space of, wow, it doesn't feel good to be out here right now, fully exposed, but I'm out here fully exposed and I'm going to stay here and I'm going to bring this in and embrace it. But if that means I have to be quiet and hide in my house, so to speak, then I'm going to do that until I feel comfortable. But that doesn't mean I'm not moving forward because sometimes we just have to be comfortable with the uncomfortable mm -hmm. because I'm yep. still doing, because I did the journaling. My books came from my journaling, you know, understanding transformation, all of that. Just, you don't know where journaling is going to take you. You don't know where the vision is going to take you. You don't know the life path you're going to go by meditation and journaling. And, you know, so when you say that, I was like, oh, my God, I'm so right there with you on that because it's the truth. And it, it's what gave me the strength that I needed. It confirmed my conviction with God that there is a higher source and that I am loved beyond what anybody on this planet could ever do to me. And it was that source that kept me alive all these years when I wanted to die. You wow. know, and yeah. that's the power of journaling and all of that. Agreed. And you, you you said a couple of things there that just just give me, um, you know, pause to say, you know, we are bigger than most of us believe that we are. Um, and, and many times we have acquiesced our uh, position of what we are here to do and um, really the power that we all have to um, continue to live in this world. And, um, you know, the, and many people are believing that the external forces that are happening to them are, are the things that are in control. But if you would look inside of yourself and start to understand, you know, who you really are, who you're really connected to, uh, understand that if you're created, connected to the creator and you can also create and co-create with him, Oh my gosh, your your world opens up because then uh, maybe most people who uh, were saying the things to you or provided trauma in your life were ones that just did not understand how big they were. And they didn't understand that um, we were all put here to do greater things. We were all put here to create and not only create just you know monstrous or mean things, but we were created to create loving things, to create things that uh, bring us together, create things that help us all. And by doing that, man, it, it changes uh, the way we are. And it's just those practices and disciplines that begin to get us down that path where, like you said, the, the opening of uh, sometimes I call a mask and you had a mountain and sometimes <laughs> I would have masks that I would be wearing wherever I would go because, you know, the social norm was this. And someone said, you're supposed to show up and look like this and talk like this. But when you begin to really take off those masks or the mountains and you begin to see it, yes, you're vulnerable, but you get to show up how you really are, who you really are, what you were born to be and how you were born to impact this world. And man, uh, what a great way to live, because then, you know, all of this stuff, it's all this stuff out here, no matter what it is, it's temporary. Yep. But what's inside of you, that's eternal. That's yep. that's that's eternal. It's living. I know. <laughs> I know. I'm getting goosebumps and I have more to say, but we're going to go ahead and take a quick commercial break. 
Are you ready to step into your true potential? Kathleen Flanagan's Get Into Alignment session helps you break through blocks, balance your energy, and align with your highest self. Experience clarity, purpose, and flow like never before. Visit KathleenMFlanagan.com and unlock the power of living in alignment today. Welcome back, everyone, to the Journey of an Awakening Spirit. This is Kathleen Flanagan, your host, and we are streaming on the Bold Brave TV network, and we have Randy Atkins in the room with us today. So, Randy, so what are you doing today? I mean, I mean, you've got, I mean, you've talked about a lot of things, but what are you doing today from all the work that you've done up until this point? Yeah, today- I'm sure your life twisted and turned. <laughs> yes, my, my life has twisted and turned, but it has been a fantastic journey along the way. Uh, today, I am uh, definitely taking all of this in and sharing this information and consistently sharing it in writing form, speaking form, and um, being able to um, say share a message of being able to be a, a producer in your life. So um, and, and being able to produce on your purpose and your gifting and who you really are. And what do I mean by being a producer? You know, in movies, we always see the actors and the actresses and we see them on the big billboards and uh, they're fantastic. We have some really great actors and actresses, but if I were to meet them personally, they would not be that same person that I see on the big screen. Yeah. They would be somebody completely different. Uh, even though we want them to be that person on the screen, that is not who they are. The other thing that I've found about actors and actresses is that sometimes we are acting and acting actresses in our lives. And we are coming up, showing up in places as an actor or an actress based on what people tell us we should do, our social norms and everything else. But I'm encouraging everyone to know that actors and actresses work on somebody else's script. And so I'm sharing this message because we can move forward and not just be the actors and actresses of our lives, but we can, you say, well, maybe I'll be the director. Cool, the director also has some creative uh, abilities and creative freedoms, and they can say, hey, this is the shot we are gonna do, this is how we're gonna do it. But the director also works for someone, and that is the producer. And the producer is the one that is able to bring about all of the resources together, the teams together, and make sure that you get to a place where you can distribute this great thing that you call a movie. And what I would say is your life is that movie. You have many seasons of that movie that you're producing every day. So why not be the producer of your movie and not just be an actor or an actress? And I'm sharing that because you could be way more excited about what you're bringing together all of these resources and people to help you really bring about that purpose that you have on the inside because the producer has something but they need a lot of people they need a lot of resources to bring it together and finally put it out to this world and you are vulnerable when you put it out to the world because you don't know how they're going to see what you just put out but when you do that in your life consistently and you're moving in that creative way then you are in a space where you can wake up happier. I had many people as an ordained minister, people would come to me and say, hey, I wake up and I'm just not happy with life. I don't want to be here or, um, you know, there are things going on. And I wanted to be able to share this message with as many people that you can wake up and yes, things happen in this world, things that we don't like happen in this world, but you can have this internal great light that's within you that can give you a, a source of joy and happiness every single day. And I wanted to provide a path for that consistently. And so that's why I share this message, not just through writing, but also through speaking and, and continuing to share it as in many forms as I can, that you can wake up every day and have joy, even if it looks like everything outside of you is falling <laughs> apart. <laughs> I totally agree with that. I, I, I have one of my things I tell people to do is get off the stage because when we're in the drama of our life, we're not seeing it because now we're acting. And so we're caught in the drama. But if you don't, if you want something to change, get off the stage and observe what's happening in your life, you know, get off the stage. And I remember when a friend of mine told me to do that and it took me years to really understand fully what he meant by that. But it was when I got off the stage, 
I could see what's unfolding in my life. If I didn't like this, well, then let's deviate that. But when you're in it, you don't see it. So yes, becoming the observer, sense. and I love, I love your analogy because that is so true about life of being producers. And so when, and when you said about being happy, that is so true. Cause I remember people would be, would say, well, I'm really happy. It's like, well, you're going to show your face. Yeah. Because you're sometimes your face doesn't tell you that you're happy. So you right. need to show that. And so I remember consciously saying, well, I want to show, I want to be happier and I want to feel happier and like tell my face I'm happy too. So people yeah. know I'm happy. And so I started paying attention to like, well, I have cats and cats do very funny antic things to get your attention to laugh at them. And I started laughing. I started looking for things to make me happier because I was already happy, but I had, I wasn't in that place where I wanted to be happy. You know, I had that quiet, still place of the happiness within myself, but mm -hmm. I wasn't emoting it. And yes. when you emote happiness, your whole world changes again, just by emoting happiness. And I'm like, wow, the world's all of a sudden gotten friendlier. And it's like, no, the world didn't get friendlier. You changed how you're presenting yourself to the world. And then yeah. it helped me to get more in alignment with it's okay to come out and be vulnerable. Yes. And you, you know, can, so like yes. everything you say is just like, I'm just like, it's all like going ch -ch 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 in my head. I love it. <laughs> yeah. I, and and I, I love you. I love you're getting off the stage. I, I'm going I'm to have to use that as a, I continue to move forward because I feel that that's sometimes the case. And um, as you're you're thinking about it, you when you're in it so much, it's just so close to your face. You cannot see anything else. But like you said, when you step back and you do become the observer or, you know, the producer and because the producer is seeing everything that's going on and yeah. telling you, hey, wait a minute, I need y'all to stop over here. I need you to do this. And when you're able to take a step back and look at your life, you can have a difference and make a difference. And then the part that you were talking about, about our expressing and what, how we express, I, I believe that when we begin to really align with if you have happiness on the inside, um, then that is what you begin to express externally to this world. That, of course, as you continue to express that in this world, the world has nothing else to do but to uh, give you that same feel and that same vibration back in your life. So if I'm out there emoting this happiness and this joy, uh, I'm going to get some joy back. It may not, those people who are not joyful, they're going to acknowledge that there's joy there. And it might annoy them initially, but they will <laughs> begin to say, you know what? I, I, I can't, I can't have anything wrong with it. If, you, if you're just happy, you're happy. It's great to have that in your life. And um, to to be intentional about it. And that's one of the things that I, I, I like that you said was that you were intentional about wanting to laugh. We have two cats and uh, they both have different personalities. And, you know, it's it's funny to watch them uh, in the way they interact with us. And you can begin to look at life that way and say, you know what, I can have way more joy and I can express it. And the more you express it, guess what? The more you get back and you begin to see that in your life. And, and it's a conscious choice because last year, um, my, my crawl space flooded from all the rains that we had here in Colorado. And I mean, we're talking serious flooding. Okay. Serious. Oh, yeah. And, and it was, I don't know what to do. I could have gone into overwhelm because when I had a broken pipe years ago in my other house, I was in overwhelm. I didn't know how to deal with it. It was just, it's okay. It's okay. You know, you're doing all the self-talk to just get through and overwhelm. And I decided because I started bringing that practice of being happy all the time, it was like, oh, well, what do you do? Right. I'm not going to let my happiness leave me because I don't know what to do down there. And I got a bill for $25,000 to fix it. And I was like, thank you, but no, thank you um, <laughs> kind of thing. And it's like, God, you need to tell me how to fix this. And you also need to tell me what I can do but and, and what the message is because I'm not getting it, but I don't care. I'm yep. still happy and I'm going to stay happy because that's my right. And so when you, when you do that, that's all about that mindset. Mm -hmm. What is a priority in your life? Well, being happy became a number one priority in my life. 
And because of that, that. It, that's why everything started to shift and change. That's why people come towards me. That's why people are listening to me more. You know, people, if, even if I'm at this higher vibration, as you talk about, it doesn't matter because if somebody's in a distressed situation, you know, like I just talked to this woman this morning and she said, you know, I'm doing all this, I'm doing this, I'm doing this, but I just don't seem to get to, to ask the questions. They said, well, have you thought of asking the question before you go to bed at night? because the answer will show up in the morning. <gasps> I never thought of that. What do you now? How do you do that again? You know, because it was like, because we, when we get so caught up, we don't common sense think sometimes. You're and I said, that, yeah. yeah. And I said, but for me, when do I calm down the most is when I'm going to bed every night. I talk to God every night. If I have a question, please provide this, show me this. Cause last night it was one of those of like, I don't know what's going on with me because I'm feeling this energy frequency shifting and changing. I'm feeling the changes in my body. I'm like, I'm, I wasn't scared. I wasn't overwhelmed. I wasn't anything. It's like, I don't understand what's happening. Please provide me this information. Now, I didn't get an answer in the morning, but you know what I ended up doing? Like what you just said. I ended mm -hmm. up like it, my creativity started to come back of like, I'm seeing the bigger picture of how to re like make myself more cohesive, bring all of the parts to me together. Because, you know, sometimes we still feel a little disjointed. And so that's what I was doing. And it's like, what a gift. I mean, this woman was like, thank you, thank you, thank you for reaching out. He said, well, that's part of what I'm trying to do is come out of my shell and be the one instead of people coming to me, let me be the one going out to people, which is like the scariest thing in the world for me. And I'm doing mm -hmm. it anyways. And, I, and, it, and I, there's so many beautiful things happening because of it. And it's everything that you're saying. Every bit of it's what you say. It's it's amazing, right? And, and as you continue to kind of go out there and, and share and uh, be able to provide that information and, and be in a space where, uh, you know, there is joy and you can share that with others that uh, even in the middle of all of the chaos and things that may be going on around you at this moment. And um, really, to me, again, when you look at everything outside right now, it's the past. It's what what has already occurred. And so how can I make sure I'm in this present moment? And you said something about protecting that happiness. And I believe that when we are intentional about protecting our joy and protecting that peace that we have. And again, when you ex when you finally have peace in life and you're not always struggling and fighting and battling every single thing, and you know that no matter what comes up, that you're going to be able to manage it at some point and handle it. Right now, I may not be able to do anything with it. I'm I'm a little overwhelmed, but I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to get to a space and I'm going to be able to deal with it. And um, it helps to keep down our anxiety and it also keeps us away from the depression. I always say if we continue to look at our past and we look at the things that have gone wrong and have occurred and we don't ever um, confront them and let them go, uh, then we be, end up in a depressed state. If we're always thinking about the future and finding out, well, how in the world I'm going to do this? How in the world am I going to become what I'm supposed to become? Then you end up in an anxiety kind of driven way and living. And the idea is, is to say, can I get to a space where I am aware, I am happy in this moment, and I, I can kind of bring myself back when I need to because because it is going to be a constant work that we have to do because things are going to happen. It's going to take us off, like you say, kind of, it kind of takes us off kilter. I like to say, I get off kilter because I, I don't know what to do at this moment, but I know how to bring myself back to center. And this is something I encourage everyone to do is to um, figure out what your center is. And some sometimes for me, the center is for me to step away from the situation at the moment I may need to go in a room and that's quiet and just give me just a, a minute so that I can center myself and remember that, wait a minute, all of these things are going on, but let me start to break down all of the distractions that may be starting to overwhelm or crowd me at this moment. And you center yourself and then you start moving forward again. Yes. And we're going to go ahead and take a quick commercial break. Your mindset shapes your reality. With Kathleen Flanagan's Mindset Blueprints, you'll learn powerful techniques to shift your thoughts, break limiting beliefs, and design a life of abundance and success. It's time to reprogram your mind for the life you truly desire. Visit KathleenMFlanagan.com 
and start building your new blueprint today. Welcome back, everyone, to the Journey of an Awakening Spirit. This is Kathleen Flanagan, your host, and we're streaming on the Bold Brave TV network. And I have Randy Atkins in the room with us today. Randy, what is one piece of advice you would offer our audience to help them move in a different direction to achieve their dreams or become a better version of themselves? I'm going to give a, a really cool analogy that I just love in my life is think of the thermometer. The thermometer is really good at telling us what the weather is outside. It's going to tell me the temperature and it's going to let me know uh, how things are externally. And my encouragement to everyone is if you've been a thermometer in your life and you've been looking externally at all of the things of your life, you can tell all of the problems that you have and all of the issues that you have. And you're able to kind of get it all the way down to the details. Sometimes we get very detailed about all of the things that are not right. I'm encouraging you to be a thermostat. And this is where uh, what we've been talking about today allows for you to be able to change the temperature. You are now in control of what the temperature looks like. And so when I am in my house, my thermostat allows me to change the temperature and throughout my rooms or my home. And so the same thing for your life, I'm encouraging you to be a thermostat to begin to look at what's on the inside of you to begin to show what is going to be the temperature and how you're going to show up in any situation that you have the ability to be intentional about what you're doing you have the ability to not just look at things on the outside and say well the temperature outside is going to tell me how i'm going to feel i'm now because the temperature outside is cold i got to put on all of this stuff no what if we can change the temperature i don't want to wear all of that i want to change the temperature in the way that i want in my life and so the one thing I'm leaving with you is be that thermostat and you can produce on your purpose. You can do those things in your life and you can be the real you. As Kathleen said, come off that stage. You don't have to be on the stage, but take a step back. Be the thermostat. See all of the great things that are happening in your life and understand that you have the ability to create you have the ability to live a more fulfilling life and you can protect what you have been given, that joy, that peace, that uh, living that you have right now. You can protect that with boundaries in your life. You can protect that with making sure that you are um, living with the right priorities that you have. And when you do that, then you can step back. I want you to be that producer of your life. I want you all of these mini series that you have in your life. Remember that they're only seasons and that seasons only last for so long. And so I know that this season will change at some point in time. So it may be a good season. It will change, but that's OK. It may be a bad season. It will change. You continue to be a producer in that space. Bring together all the resources. You need other people to help you, bring them together. Call them up. Tell them, hey, look, here's the vision. Here's what's going on. And you are able to then have a life that is full of joy, full of peace, full of happiness and fulfillment. And that's what I want to leave with everyone to please continue to be that thermostat. Don't just be a thermometer. I love that. What a great analogy. And, and just become... And as, as I would sum up what you said, just be comfortable with the change because change is inevitable. Yes. And that's and the one thing. And what you're saying is that's basically it. You have to be comfortable in the change. It's yes. sometimes it's, it's not fun to be us. Sometimes it sucks to be us. Sometimes yes. we're the miserable child of God because we're in our crap. Okay. That's okay. Love that out love that part of you because when you love every element of you everything starts to open up and those changes that you don't like get easier and easier and easier to manage because you're loving you yes and that's amazing right when you get to that space and sometimes we feel uh that those those places that are not the you know prettiest or they may be the darker places of our lives that we embrace those because when we begin to embrace them uh then they need embracing just like any other part of who you are and once you start doing that like you said it opens up and it allows for you to be excited about life 
regardless of what's going on at any moment or at any time, and just know that it's just part of your journey. I like to tell people that we are on a journey and we are all learning. And as we are learning on this journey, we're not going to get everything exactly right. And unfortunately, our education systems and things like that try to tell us that we're supposed yeah. to get everything right up front. And that's not how life works. Life works is I step outside and something's wet. I now know that if it's wet, I may not like wet, but I know that I may not do that again. So we, it's through trial and error that we end up really learning the most out of life. It's through us figuring things out and taking the steps and doing those things, even in the midst of change that uh, make us the better people that we need to be uh, and make us have the greater impacts and be able to share that love in a greater way. Well, thank you so much for that, Randy. So how can people get a hold of you? Yeah, you can go to randyatkinsjr.com. There you will find uh, my book, which is uh, Produce on Purpose, Experience Life Being the Real You, where some of the concepts that we just talked about today uh, is there. You can get that in ebook. You can also get that in um, a hot paperback as well as in um, in Audible. So you can listen to it there as well. And for those that are a part of this, I will provide you with a 25% discount off of my autographed copy of my book if you just put in uh, bold, bold as a coupon code on my website, randyatkinsjr.com. There you also find my podcast, which is Produce On Purpose. And there, uh, there's also some good information, more detailed information. You'll find events that I'm going to, sermons, videos. Feel free to give me some feedback as you go there, randyatkinsjr.com. And thank you, Kathleen, for having me on. And uh, I've, I've enjoyed this conversation. I have too, Randy, and I really appreciate that you came on today. So thank you so much for that. And for all of my audience, um, if you found any value in this, I would really love it if you would like and subscribe and send the link to your friends and family so they can enjoy the um, enlightening conversation that we had as well. And I want to thank you very much for joining us today. And let's see, go ahead and check out Kathleen M. Flanagan for the list of services that I have and also that I do have that free three minute de-stress meditation that is downloadable for you. So you can start bringing calm and peace and tranquility into your life. And also the Awakening Spirit and Grandma's Natural Remedies, be sure to enter Bold TV or Brave TV into the coupon codes to get the respective discounts. And we will see you next week at 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And from my heart to yours, I hope you have a fabulous week.